Welcome to the Small Business Safari, where I help guide you to avoid those traps, pitfalls, and dangers that lurk when navigating the wild world of small business ownership. I'll share those gold nuggets of information and invite guests to help accelerate your ascent to that mountaintop of success. It's a jungle out there, and I want to help you traverse through the levels of owning your own business that can get you bogged down and distract you from hitting your own personal and professional goals. So strap in, adventure team, and let's take a ride through the safari and get you to the mountaintop. Oh my God, it's another episode of the Small Business Safari, and today we're going to do just me and Alan talking about season three and recapping this sucker that we called season three. People say, Has it been three years already, Chris? It has been three seasons, Uh Alan. And people Uh say, hey, did you define your season like you have a theme? I'm like, "Uh, no. Uh, Welcome to my life, baby. Did, Did I mention that I started out in manufacturing, went to banking, went to consulting? Then uh, started a business in home services. If people knew you, they'd just be impressed that you actually stuck with us for three seasons without I'm, getting distracted. Thank you. I know. And, and uh, I, what, what were we talking about again? All know. right. So back to it. Uh, but before we get into it, guess uh, guess who has a big weekend happening? I know you like to make fun of me, Alan, but I got to I gotta, I gotta kind of tease this one because this is going to be big. Well, should I tell you about the weekend I had? Because I have a feeling you're just going to. You know what? Let's talk about crap your, all let's, over my. All right. Let, I had a really high quality weekend. All right. Very cerebral. Um, you know, it was life enriching. Did it involve uh kittens and uh knitting? Almost. Okay. Yeah. No, yeah. so uh one of our last season's guests was a young author. C. C. T. Emerson. C. T. Emerson. And yeah, so he, you know, he had published a book. He's working on book number two called Nova Two, and there's going to be four. And he had that whole marketing plan. Well, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. So for the listeners, C.T. Emerson, young man, came on, uh, amazing young man who has a full-time job but is writing, and is writing with a purpose to build a business out of being an author, and is going to have a multiple series. And I remember him calling it high fantasy. Yeah, well, because you got ever- excited about it, and I reminded you that wasn't Vegas fantasy. It was. It- yeah, young, young adult. You know what? I got excited different. again when it, I know because uh, I was I going to keep reminding I, you. I forgot that the, he redefined it for me because it's still <laughs> defined in my head as high fantasy. Well, and so you remember, right. he, you know, okay, he's, uh, you know, white Anglo Saxon like you and I are. Yeah. But he grew up in Mexico. So he has a Mexican culture. Right. And for him, it's That's very right. important that apparently a lot of um, Latino kids don't read. And so he wanted to write a book, not only to write a book, and he wanted to write in the genre, but his mission is to promote reading within that demographic. Oh, come on, man. This guy, what a good So kid. when we start talking about your weekend, I'm sure it has none of these altruistic motivations. Not a, not a one. Not All a right. One. So CT. Yeah. So CT had his, uh, there was a local bookstore in Charlotte. North and, Carolina. Yeah. And uh, so we went up to the bookstore for his reading and book signing. Oh, my gosh. See, you make connections uh, on this podcast. You make incredible connections with great people doing well, we great support. things. And so people. you went up there yeah. to CCT. And, and so at this, so we literally had a book signing. So yeah. how many people showed? Because at my book signing, I think I had a point five. Yeah, and and that one of them wasn't your wife, was it? Definitely not. No, and yeah, he, nor my mother. Or no, he had 35, 35 people there. Dude, that's awesome. Yeah, come on, CT, let's go, baby. No, it was really cool. Well, I, was, I think I think he did that because of all the lessons he learned here on this podcast. And yeah, and he's, and, he, and he's listened to a bunch of our episodes. So yeah. Yeah. all right, yes. Yeah. So you went up there. Yeah. He does the reading. Did, would, did, were you the MC? No, uh, he actually uh, had met my son when we were podcasting. Here. Right. Okay, and, yeah, Michael. Yeah, yeah. So Michael uh, became his publicist for the day, and uh, and it was a good thing because they could throw out Tolkien quotes to each other and all kinds of things that I I couldn't do. I figured Dude, I wasn't the right demographic. That's awesome. And yeah. um, by the way, if you're trying to get young uh, Hispanic kids to read, I don't think you're the right demographic. No, no, it's all old white guy. Yeah, I'm not uh, sure what I'm the right demographic dude, for, but that how, admit. how stoked was CT? I mean, was he like on cloud nine after it? I, yeah, I, you know, I don't know. The, the word surreal is overused, so I won't use it, but it was a really cool moment. His wife, who's been very involved uh, in the process as an editor and, uh, you know, he's got his alpha readers and his beta readers. And so I think it was just, uh, 
just a really rewarding moment for him. And it was, it was a very cool thing. So they went through a Q and a, uh, that was scripted and then they opened up, uh, and there were plenty of questions from the audience, which was really cool. He did, he did say, this is kind of a funny thing. So who, he, he, so young adult fantasy. Exactly. So, yes. I, I do have that. Okay. What age group would you assume that that targets? Yeah. Well, uh, for me, I young I, adult fantasy, not Vegas. Oh, uh, well, I'm still stuck. It's between 18 and 25 for me because he has to be. Le- oh, <laughs> okay, shit, you got the 18 right. So it, it, the target would be 11 to 18, 11 to 17. No way. Guess who the number one reader of young adult fantasy is? Uh, women over 65. <laughs> oh my god. Hey baby. So when you're thinking Maybe about I'm your avatar the as a customer, they're they're old yeah. 65 year old ladies. Yeah, I don't know how that's going to make and, and change his and looks. Old, it, again, it's all relative because we're getting to those ages. Yeah, 65 is not that old. They're, they're looking pretty good now. They are starting to look pretty good. So now I'm going to look for them because now they're reading the same fantasy I'm reading, right? <laughs> right. Oh, it's a little. It's right. I keep forgetting his fantasy was all about yeah. mythic creatures and. um well, mine is no, it was just a really cool thing to see. I mean, I, I love I love small business. I mean, the fact that he's an accountant by day and a young adult fantasy writer by early morning. And that is awesome. And, and his uh, wife, super supportive. And you could just see she was glowing. And, and it was cool. They had the Q&A. Then they had questions from the audience. And then he got to read chosen passages and in the book there's a lot of terminology that's you know spanish based and so just to hear his inflection on that it it was a it was a very enriching time so i remember because when he was here i said hey man can we do a couple pictures after and i ripped out the sombreros and he goes no you can't do that no, no, no. that's no. that's uh that's going to be inflammatory it's and not going to look good and so yeah. uh so here's what he doesn't know uh, so you have to go out there, CT, if you're listening to this, and you'll see that I did a couple of posts where I superimposed some sombreros. You did not. Of you... course I did. Yeah. That. I'm kidding. <laughs> but I want him to listen. <laughs> listen here, fantasy writer. I got, I got fantasies too. All right. All right. So what life enriching thing do you have coming up All this right. weekend? So did I touch young Hispanic kids to make them read? No. Uh, did I do young life? No. But guess what I'm about to do this weekend? What are you about to do? All right. So Friday night, I'm going to go uh, watch my buddy's kid play basketball. And one of the most surreal things, back to surreal being overused, you said it, so I'm going to say it. My a small sp- game seems kind of wholesome. It is, but check this out. Mm-hmm. Uh, my buddy's from Michigan originally. His son is 6'11", uh, and uh, he decided to go to prep school. He's in prep school out in Arizona. He's flying into Atlanta to play against a team on Friday night, and the team he's playing against, all of the players are being paid and the minimum salary for his paid players that he's playing against is a hundred thousand dollars. All these kids are seventeen to nineteen years old. Freaking kidding me! It is not the basketball game that you and I grew up. With, no, bro. I can't wait to see this. It's going to be amazing. So Saturday, then um, I do work, and we're going to have our subcontractors all come in for the day to show them a trade appreciation day. Looking forward. to Do you that. know what you get with a seventeen-year-old with a hundred grand? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they're a prick. Yeah, these guys. I, I can't wait to see this. Uh, <laughs> Reports to come, Alan. Reports to come. Hey, clean your room. No. I make more money than you, Mom. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. If they even live with Mom. They're probably like, you know, uh, some of our, I mean, it's just craziness. All right. So Saturday, uh, again, subcontractors come into our office. We're going to do a little dog and pony. We're going to feed them, play a little music, make them feel appreciated. Uh, We'll be counting down the time. And then, boom, I fly out Saturday night to go to. Wait a minute. You're you're having a meeting Saturday morning, right here in Atlanta in our office. Okay, with all of our subcontractors. Okay. Then I drive down to the airport, get on an airplane, and I hop down to Daytona. Are you going to be looking at your watch the entire the time? Me- yeah. The me- <laughs> and I get on there, and I I fly down to Daytona Beach. I fly in. My buddy picks me up. Uh, we're going out to a yacht. I'm pretty sure on Saturday night to meet with the NASCAR muckety mucks. NASCAR is a big deal. And then on Sunday morning, when you say yacht. Uh, I don't know how big it is. I'll have to report that one back. Uh, I've, I, I kind of know what it is, but I'm not sure yet. So, so what would you just imagine this was going to be like? Um, I, uh, did I mention I I'm into a young adult fantasy? <laughs> uh, that's right. Yeah. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. That'll be Saturday night, Sunday. I wake up and then we go to the Daytona 500, which is the great American race, and the Super Bowl, and I get to go down on the grid. I get to hobnob. I get to sit there, meet drivers, do the whole thing. Get to watch the race, and then I fly right back home on Sunday night. 
And so for one day, I get to go travel down to the Daytona 500. So you're home in time to be a good uh, husband and father Sunday night. Uh, so nobody's home when I get home. Okay. Uh, they're all gone because they're all, uh, and I am being a good father and husband, because the girls are down at the, the beach and my son's at school. What beach? Uh, they're at Kiowa Island. Nice. Right. And I'm not there with them. That, that, I want to play Kiowa. Have you played Kiowa? How many balls did you lose? Uh, too many to count. I, I will tell you this. Let's go back to Kiowa. So I played the ocean course I played we, it three we, times. We were at Kiowa right when I asked the question. Yeah. But you're, you were going back to it. Go ahead. All right. So I played uh, the ocean course uh, three times now. Um, have, uh, the best uh, 99, 98, and 103 I've ever shot in my life. <laughs> Uh, I remember the first time I played it, though, we have, you have four caddies, right? And the four caddy takes you out there. Because you uh, can't see where your ball lands. No. It's uh, dead I mean, flat and, right on and, the ocean. And the other thing, if you if you know the course at all, you're along the ocean. Uh, it's very narrow. And it's also built up uh, because of the floods, that, that the, yeah. with the high tide coming in. I mean, so, it almost feels like the ocean's above you yeah. when you're at the clubhouse. I've been to the clubhouse. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. And, and so when you go out there, you're playing to elevated tees and greens. And so if you don't hit the green or you don't hit the T, if you don't hit the fairway, you're down like, and and literally I was down like, it felt like 50 feet <laughs> and, uh, and I'm playing and we go out and after nine holes, the caddy kid's great. He's just awesome. But again, back to saying the wrong words, he kept saying to me, boy, you know what? There's not even any wind. Boy, there's just no wind. I finally looked at him at the ninth hole and went, I got it. There's yeah. no wind. I suck. Yeah, you really... The ball's going everywhere. I know it. <laughs> because usually we're playing in gale force winds and you can blame the wind. I was playing in it's one like, of the... Come on, man. This is as good as it gets and you still can't hit the fairway. I did. I actually um, I actually went out in 45, 40, 42, but I came home at like 60. I mean, yeah, I you get know. tired and it's just... Oh, oh yeah. The wind, the wind started blowing in the afternoon. But uh, so I don't actually enjoy playing that course because my game's just not up for it right now. Got to have the low um, driving shot. You do. Um, so, but there are some other great courses. And if you've never been to Kiowa Island, it's just amazing. You're in gates. It is just, the houses are amazing. The The uh, environment is amazing. It's very family oriented. It's just a great place. I really enjoy it. But I was not there this, uh, I won't be there this weekend. Um, but I will be there, I think, uh, coming up in March. So we're starting to lay out our plans. We're with, going to with your family? uh with my wife oh really yep oh wow her. yeah actually i was invited for my birthday because i missed uh <laughs> your wife invited you for your birthday uh my wife did not invite me and um um i get to tag along with her because really i get invited because of her so we're going to do that we're also going to go to acapulco for the first time ever our friends have a place out there and it just gone out there so we're gonna go out there and see that so you really embrace this theme of letting go in the business well, let's talk about that for a little bit, uh, because let's go back to season three and, and talk a little bit more about the themes. You know, I'm an overnight success. It just took me 14 years. Um, but what you don't see and don't hear about is I didn't do a podcast in the first four years. I didn't do a podcast in the first 10 years. I didn't do a podcast in the first 12 years. Didn't write, Why? Didn't write a book. I didn't write a book. Why? Because I was busy humping my ass, making this thing happen day in, day out, every night, every weekend. I mean, if when when people say i want to run my own business cuz i want to be able to golf like chris on friday afternoons well chris doesn't golf on friday afternoons uh but i did say that before i started because i saw all these other guys doing it um while your time is your own and we do there's one concept i want to make sure everybody hears we all have the same amount of time whether you're a billionaire or you're a machinist working in a machine shop or a garbage we all have the same amount of time it's what we do with our time that's so important. And I chose to really invest my time. In Acapulco. Uh, well, now Acapulco. But mm -hmm. when I first started, it was all about growing this business and building the processes, finding people, making mistakes, learning from my mistakes, re doing it again, relearning from my mistakes, doing it again, learning again from my mistakes. <laughs> it just happens, man. You just, yeah, uh, it, but, but I was grinding. Uh, I was there for my kids. <clears throat> I uh, was coaches. I, I stayed with them, but we didn't go on a lot of vacations. I mean, mm -hmm. a lot of that stuff just stopped. And on big, long vacations, the family went and I would do like two or three days and be right back and they would stay in the rest of the week. Yeah. And your vacations tended to be going to places where you had relatives where you could stay at their house rather than number one resort. Yeah. And you had Wi-Fi mm -hmm. and you were completely in, in, in. So 
it that's a big thing that um you know it is not all glitz and glitter we love talking about that and i will continue to talk about that because you should aspire to be doing what i'm doing now you're right um everybody should be big daddy once once you just got to be big daddy and not I, everybody can be big I, daddy I, all the time i can't wait for this weekend to see if i'm really gonna be big daddy <laughs> but let's talk about some of these themes. we had some great guests on and i think one of the biggest things i took away was know thyself and know your business you gotta you, you gotta know who you that. are right you 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 better know who you are as you start your don't business. you think most people would say i know who i am no i don't think so i think people are very unaware so they might think they know who they are but they don't exactly right i think you get into your business you think you know who you are you don't you're not very self-aware and as you uh, get into your business you have to really figure out how you're going to react to certain situations you don't know until it's presented to you as mike tyson said and it wasn't attributed to him but i'm still gonna say it everybody has a great plan until you get hit in the nose yep and starting a business you're getting hit in the nose on if you're not getting hit in the nose on day one then you're not in business you the first time you get hit in the nose then you're in business let's go party on let's the fight has begun so how, i mean what advice would you give to these new entrepreneurs who are listening or people who are thinking about jumping in and how do you learn about yourself? Do, do you have to learn everything the hard way? I don't think you have to learn everything the hard way. No, that's not, that, that's true. I think you have to keep your eyes and ears open, but you also be very self-aware. But watching people to be, who people you aspire to be and people you're looking to be, look at them and don't look at all the good stuff. Well, and I also think you need to really be open to your inner circle of friends, your trusted advisors, your confidants and being very transparent with them that you want good hard feedback whether it's on the business plan or where do you think my weaknesses are going to be or what do you think of some things i'm going to struggle with because they're all going to be like yay you're starting a business i'm really excited for you well help me avoid some of these landmines what do you think i need to worry about and get that feedback i mean because you're not very few people are very self-aware enough i think uh i think you need to ask a question like this i'm gonna start this business how is it gonna fuck up right right that evokes an emotion yes i just swore people you're right because if you read my book the well-placed f-bomb works but that evokes an emotion i just raised the back of your hairs if you're driving that one caught your attention because that's the one that gets you to go not just hey um what am i doing wrong or hey if i'm going to do this what would i do wrong no hit them between the eyes because you want real feedback from people hit them raw emotion and people will fire back at you it'll save you a ton of time and a ton of money if and, you ask that question and be real and be authentic and didn't we hear that from gabby meteor <laughs> right be real be authentic this chick is killing it and we we love her we've been watching her uh watching her ascent as she's been doing her thing and uh, that was the craziest episode we'd had to date i think so we talked about her selling pictures of her feet on the <laughs> internet and she had no idea there would be a business there and i went uh, I didn't either. I never I, felt so old. I, I didn't. Not only did I feel old, but uh, I went back and took that to my sales team, who are the most corrupt in my entire company. And I told them about that. And all three of them went, uh, or three of the four of them went, oh, yeah, 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 no. I mean, yeah, I probably would have. <laughs> I'm like, you sick pigs. Anyway, well, uh, so, it, but it, Gabby it, has figured out, leave the nine to five, be authentic, be a creator. She truly is telling us you know as o o the, us old guys that you can be an influencer and be a market but it's not easy it's still work i don't you just don't sit there i mean she's i mean she's trying all kinds of things to see what's going to stick well and it was funny to me because one of the themes that became very apparent because this last season you started getting more accomplished guests people who you know were uh, ceos of major franchising organizations um people who have their own very successful podcasts. I mean, we were really starting out on our coverage and what was cool about all these accomplished people. And it's something that's very dear to me was the value of having a good mentor. And there were, I mean, so many of them just had that one person in their life that either kicked them in the ass or that they could go to for the straight story, you know, some sort of coaching, some sort of mentoring. And we bring it up to Gabby and she's like, yeah, I got coaching and, and, uh, and then I, I got what I needed out of that. And then I pivoted, she kept using the word pivoted and she, she got like coached for two weeks. And meanwhile, 
you know, people in our demographic, you know, get coached for decades, you know. decades. Yeah. So that, that taught me a lot, you know, listening to her and the way she approached things, but you're right. Common theme. Mm-hmm. If you don't have a good mentor, if you don't have somebody who's better than you, who is challenging you to be better than yourself today, then you are not challenging yourself. Stretch out. I, I just got done telling my team this, uh, and I can't quote Helen Keller better than, uh, better than she can do it is that, uh, if you truly want to grow, growth does not happen in warmth and, com- and comfort. Comfort it happens in times of stress and discomfort, and she says it way better. And I use that with my team. It's a great quote. And I I uh, go back to that. If you don't have a mentor who's not stressing you out, he's not a mentor. She's not a mentor. Find somebody. Do that. And I'll tell you what. A lot of us older people really want to see younger people succeed. Mm-hmm. And the more I talk about it, the more I do this. That's really why we're so excited, excited about CT. I, I, dude, I can't. In fact, I, I, I actually you just you, honestly you got I'm, electric when he. Was I did I, yeah. honestly. I'm going to text him after this. Uh, after we're done with this episode, saying, "Dude, I can't believe I didn't get the invite, but I'm glad you did it. <laughs> you invite me to the next thing, and I'll be there. Yeah, because I love adult fantasy. I mean, uh, <laughs> young what, adult yeah, fantasy. Yeah, that trying too. to get the little kids to read. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. No, but I'm so thrilled for this kid, and um. And he gives you, you know, gives you faith in our next generation, right? It does, and and I love uh, just having him there. And he was a thoughtful individual, and I, that's why uh, we're we're doing this thing in the uh, in uh, February of twenty three. I'm doing that summer entrepreneurship academy, and I'm putting my full weight behind it. And we're going to put these kids in here, and I, by God, whether they want it or not, I'm going to try to help them. Well, and even CT is another good example of he didn't use the word mentor, but. He has his alpha readers. So he writes, he writes this book, which, you know, I don't know if any of the listeners have ever done any kind of artistic endeavor, endeavor, but it's scary to show somebody something that you've done like that because you're afraid of getting negative feedback. And yet he has the alpha readers that he's specifically chosen. I need you to beat this to death, not only grammatically, but thematically, just pacing everything and he he takes all of that and and then we'll rewrite re-edit and i remember him saying it uh he said i welcome all feedback mm-hmm. he said did i take it all not all of it but but i welcome all feedback and- I've, I've got another friend of mine that you know todd um i've never met anybody and he he does he's got some entrepreneurial things going on and He'll, uh, he'll come to me and just say, you know, tell me what you think. And he doesn't want me to go, yeah, that's okay. That's good. He wants hard. And I've never seen anybody actually take constructive criticism so positively. I can't take it that. All right, positive. Alan, when you were in corporate America, did you like yes men working for you? Did you like guys who said Loved yes, it. yes, yes? Oh my God. You did. Great. You did. No, I, I mean, you know, you like being, <laughs> you like being affirmed, but no, you need You aren't as good as you can be unless you have people, you have to have um, the self-confidence to be able to accept constructive criticism. I agree. So um, I can't stand yes men. Um, I can't stand people who disagree with me all the time. I love the challenge. I love being stretched out. Um, And and, uh, go back to it. If you listen to this podcast, maybe this is the first time you ever listened to this, but um, I've been through therapy. Um, I, I didn't believe in it, uh, but I did it. And I did it for a number of reasons. Um, number one was anger management. I mean, I was a very angry person. I just, uh, it was me against the world. And that's how I was successful, uh, not in business, but in sports. Um, yeah, I, I was, I'm a pretty big guy, uh, but I always felt like I was a small guy. And uh, that meant I had to hit you harder. So, uh in therapy, uh, a long time, uh, she, she just kept trying to break this down. She goes, so you don't need self-affirmation. So this is a problem. And she went back to the childhood and and the fact that I didn't have it. And I've had my dad on this podcast. And and I was like, no, uh-uh. And if my dad ever told me I was doing a great job, I'd be wondering what the catch was. Because he always stretched me to be better than I am. And you need that. And, and But your, your makeup, your DNA has to have that in you. And I love having that. And, and, and having that is, is so key and to have that stretch because that's what's going to make you better. And if you want yes men around you, you're looking at the wrong people. And if you want to start a business, you want to find the most negative Nelly in the world 
because I want them pounding the absolute living shit out of you. Because you know why? Because if you're into it, that's, you're an entrepreneur, very, you're optimistic, and you're going to come out of that going, hey, I feel better about it. kind of sounds a little s and to me, Chris, but I well, do agree. Adult fantasy. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's not actually one of my fantasies. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> kind of sounded like it was. But no, to be able to, uh, I, w- I would say if you're asking people who you know will be honest with you, it's a it's a big ask and they're always uncomfortable. I mean, very few of your friends are going to go, oh yeah, I'm licking my chops. I'm going to beat the crap out of Chris. But any any criticism that they give or cr- constructive advice is really there to help you. It may hurt when you get it, but the it's not delivered be, uh, to be painful. It's I, delivered. I to asked help you, you to uh, read my book before I published it, and you came back with very thoughtful and very, uh, very concise and very direct feedback, and it was all taken in the context it was given. I'm glad but, you had your anger management therapy. And thank you. And, <laughs> and, and you are definitely glad because before <laughs> anger management therapy, you wouldn't be driving with the car with wheels. No, I those, know. Those, those tires were gone. I know. I got an extra your, set your of tires was, in my garage just because I know you. But, Listen, but was, your you feed, was your feedback good? A hundred percent. And if you didn't feel the ability or the, feel that the, uh, I, the, the, um, what's the word i'm looking for the the ability just to give it to me knowing that i'll take it and I would it be, still was really hard for me to, to write that i'm sure it was yeah and i'm because it is because when people say hey give me the real thing no you want to get some feedback from somebody to a listener response what would you do to take me out and, and i did that with my team oh i like that and so i said to my team uh we did a strategic offsite meeting and i said what would you do to take the trusted toolbox out and I remember on one podcast and during season three, you said, I'm going to come up with the untrusted toolbox. No, no, no. The no. More, trusted. more trusted toolbox. Yeah, well, you, you got still pissed. I, I was so pissed. <laughs> and I was like, you were so on, dude. You know what? I'm coming after you, Alan. And we talked about that during the podcast. I'm going to start with a more trusted toolbox. A more. So that alphabetically, I'll come up before <laughs> nice. you. Too. Yeah. Hey, go ahead. Take a yeah. full page ad and yeah. yellow pages, dude. <laughs> Tough guy. Huh? Now you know how to respond. <laughs> Again, that's the fighter in me. And and that's that's how I've been raised. That wasn't, I, you know, that's actually not how I've been raised. It's funny because my brother is a little bit different than me. Um, but we've talked about this over and over. And I'm going to say this, and then I'm going to go on to another topic. I had a great question put to me. Do you, I think I have raised my kids better than my father raised me? And that's a seriously deep question. It was so hard. But if you're a parent out there, that's a question you need to ask yourself. And I'm going to leave it right there. It's rhetorical. And I'm not going to ask you to answer because I know this is a big deep question. Yeah. But I had this posed to me uh, a couple weeks ago from one of my employees. You know, I thought I he said I thought I was raising my my kids better than my dad raised me. And he goes and I'm starting to look at um the outcomes. And I don't know. And I said, "You know, it's funny you say that." And um and I'm going to think about that and I'm going to come back and I'm going to respond tomorrow. And I did. I came back and we sat down again and we talked. I said, "You know what? I thought I would be a better father than my dad." And um uh the Frankly, uh, I would say the answer would be we're probably even at best, and I probably lost it worst, but mm-hmm. I was not better. No, and uh, why? And uh, so I look back at it, you know, uh, but it's a different time. You know, could my dad raise kids in today's world? I think he could have adapted, um, you know, but uh, and so it's going to be hard. And so will my kids say that about themselves? And that's a huge question to ask yourself because... Um, the thing I, I challenge my whole team with is, um, what do you want to be left with? Cause destiny is not predetermined. Destiny is driven by you and your actions every day and your actions every day are driven by your thoughts and our thoughts are mostly negative. And if our thoughts drive our actions and our actions begin to be got our character, the character is a deep word. Your destiny comes from your character. And I just actually had one of the, my former employees from SunTrust lost his wife. And uh, <clears throat> uh, I had to lay him off uh, when I came in. And he only worked for me for a year and a half. And he made such an impact on me. And I had to lay him off because my job to come in was to consolidate and to do this. And I, I did it as best I could. And obviously, I must have done it all right because we've still remained friends on Facebook. Yeah all these years and he just lost his wife Mm. and the outpouring of love for him and his wife on Facebook is astounding because you know what we're not talking about how much money she made 
no. how many conquests she made, how many how many people she fired. She didn't talk about they've not, none of that. They're talking about the love, the outpouring, the change in people's lives that she made. And I I just continually watch it, and I am I, I know it's him too because David was a great guy too. Well, and it's interesting that you bring that up because this is a podcast about business, and and it's about being successful in business. And if people were to take the time to dig early, early when nobody was listening to our podcast, we we talked about our definition of success, and it isn't just money. And you and I both during season three lost a parent. And it makes you sit there and take stock of what is your life all about and what is the legacy that you leave behind and what are the things that people are going to say about you. And it ain't going to be about how hard you worked or the money that you made. It won't be. And uh, I, I could probably power through this and talk about it because we both lost. You lost your father and I lost my mother. Um, uh, going to my mom's funeral as a Catholic uh uh, is a big deal and uh we we had it in our hometown and uh, and just for the listener chris did the eulogy and i can't believe you did it it was amazing i was really proud of you for nailing that thank you uh that 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 was big for me um i felt like i owed it to my mother and her legacy i felt like i owed it to my father i felt like i owed it to my family uh that i um because i was talking about this all the time you know, the reason i started my company is i'm gonna bet on myself nobody's gonna speak for me but me and I didn't want anybody else to speak about my mother uh, than me uh, because of the impact she had on me in my life and what she did for me. And she was amazing. Uh, my mom was a nurse, but also the person who took care of the entire home. She worked a full-time job my entire life and took care of everything in the house. And she was five foot nothing. And I was six foot two <laughs> and I, I'll never forget. Uh, uh, there was one time, you know, I was, I was, um, I was not being the best kid in the world. And uh, she came up behind me and she knew this right place just to grab you, but right behind your elbow. And if anybody wants to know where that is, you, you, you email me and I'll tell you where it is. Cause I found it. Cause I can use it. I don't have to use it with my kids, but my mother used it with me and she could cripple me with just one little pinch. Really? Oh yeah. <laughs> this is five foot nothing mom. <laughs> and she was the sweetest thing in the world. But the minute I was not acting like, a, and trust me, I, I could test her patience. Uh, I was a good kid, but it, it's thing. But we we'll go back to that. Uh, the legacy that she left um, of doing her eulogy, but seeing that full church, the church I grew up in. And you were uh, talking and about the the priests. And the priests all showed up. Uh, to, which I didn't know this. So priests don't have to show up at weddings. Um, at funerals. At fu I'm sorry, funerals nor weddings. Yeah, yeah. either. Um, and so... Uh, I was talking, so my mother's, uh, funeral, uh, we actually, she actually had three priests at hers. Um, but Ed also, who does the production on this, uh, and I want to give a shout out to him because he will listen to this. Uh, he lost his mother too. And, uh, you want to talk about a remarkable woman? Rosemary was an remarkable woman. I love my mom and, uh, I did not know, uh, Ed's mom as well as he does. But I went to Ed's funeral uh, as well because we all lost a lot of people this year. And it's been, it's just been shitty. I mean, it's shitty, boys. Boys and girls, it, you know, I don't care how old they are. I don't care if your mom or your dad lives to be 105, 92, 89, 75. It's still your mom. Still it's still your, your mom. It's still your dad. And it sucks. And just admit it. Admit it to yourself and just let it go. I went to Ed's funeral and uh, I, I didn't feel like I had to. I feel like I wanted to. And when I went, it was amazing. What was so amazing was she had five priests God at her wedding. Night. And again, they don't have to be there. They're not being paid to be there. They're not being told to be there. They chose to go there to show their respect for a woman and a family that they totally respected. And uh, going to the lunch after, um, while they're characters, uh, priests and the Catholic, uh, and, and, and don't think the bad thing. It's all good. They're <laughs> very, very good people. Stop with the characterizations. Um, just remembering her and his family was, was so amazing to see that. And it uh, was very cathartic for me uh, because, again, it's always easy to solve somebody else's problems than yeah. it is to solve your own. It was so much better for me to go to somebody else's funeral than my own mother's funeral. Mm -hmm. And I got to put some closure to some things and he doesn't know this and he'll listen to it now and, and now know that um, thank you for inviting me because it was big for me. 
gives you some perspective. Now you said something in all of that about you wanted to do the eulogy because you didn't want anybody else to do it. And this is going to be a crappy segue, but we've made a lot of fun about you uh, not being a good partner. You could never be a a partner. You don't play well in the sandbox with others. Yep. And yet that was another theme that I picked up this last season was some of the amazing partnerships that we got to uh, hear about. And I mean, and it wasn't very often where it was two people that knew each other forever. And in some cases we had, uh, we had the, uh, the Atlanta office guys, <laughs> there's like seven of them and they just did it. Right. And, uh, but then we had, um, the deck kings the deck kings yeah brian and john yeah i I, so i listen to these stories and i I actually feel like i'm listening to adult fantasy (laughs) here we go again (laughs) but i can't believe it but it can happen and it can happen and they can they're they're out they're they're kicking i mean what a crazy story that was yeah i love these guys i still talk to them uh to this day uh back to atlanta office technologies those guys uh brad dell came on he's one of seven how they did that uh, they hardly had it in writing it just talks about if you get in business with good people but how often do you not get in business with good people well you always hear partnerships and sinking ships you know i mean it's it's uh it seems like it's a rare thing but we we've had the pleasure of talking to a lot of people who are in these amazing partnerships what do you why do you think they were so successful i think um there has to be common core values and character and integrity and all of those things way above business acumen in my opinion so how do you figure out if you have the same core values i don't know know either yeah you you and i are doing this podcast and again if you're just picking up our podcast listen to this i wanted to do a podcast i want to do this because i want to promote myself uh i yeah, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I, I want to give back to everybody. I want you to do this. I'm not monetizing this a bit. I want you to hear all the lessons I've learned. But I actually went to Alan and said, Alan, please, please come do this with me. He goes, okay. I now said, keep in mind, listener, we, we were about six Guinnesses in at that point. But yeah, yeah. we were at the bar. Yeah. I said, you know what? We are really smart. <laughs> and we're funny too. And we're funny too. <laughs> God, wow. Watch this. When does a dad when does a joke become a dad joke? When it becomes apparent. All right, let's um, keep going. Hello. We're gonna keep going. See, we're funny. Yeah. All right, so we keep doing this. I said, Alan, uh, you do this. And he goes, well, if you want me to, sure. Yeah. You know, I mean, if it helps you, sure. I'm like, okay. So I came back to him later and I said, Hey man, it's really going to help me. Can you do this? And he goes, yeah, 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 I can do it. Um, so what's it like? I said, well, let's just drink beers and, um, talk to people. He goes, all right. So very first, uh, time let's get together. He goes, Hey, do you have any beer? I'm like, no, can you bring some? <laughs> so I basically, I made him buy beer, come here and do this. Are we a great partnership? It's up to you to decide um you listening you figure it out i don't know i think so we're getting some good feedback and we are getting some great feedback because i've done a couple of episodes without alan and i would tell you um it's just not the same you know i I get the right content it comes out it's just not as funny it's just not as dynamic well it's 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 easy for me to just kind of punch your buttons a little bit and you get all wound up i do yeah like when i want to start my a more trusted toolbox than just to what? see you go and you do that again. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Don't you dare bring that up again. They actually, I'm actually grabbing the, uh, the, the cloth in front of me. So one of the other things I picked up this year though, uh, from everybody is that, uh, my path to where I am today is very circuitous. Your path today to where you are was very circuitous. However, you had an entrepreneurial bent when you were in your high school years. God, I yeah, had one too. That, yeah. Yeah, we, it, 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 we were there. Mm-hmm. However, we didn't know what we were going to do with it. And what a lot of things I've heard from people is you got to keep your eyes open, keep your ears open and be open to that because there may be a door that closes, but there's a door that opens. And the person I'm thinking of is, um, oh my gosh, she just lost her mind. Uh, I lost her. Uh, I'm looking at her, Michelle Delgado. She uh, was in the hospitality business for years. COVID shuts her down. It's over. And she says, you know, I don't have to work, but I'm going to work because I have to work because I love working. And she said, I'm going to come up with this. I'm going to come up with the heart inspired coaching and consulting. And I, I was like, oh my God, I love this. So 
one door closes, another door opens. And I think we've seen that with a number of different people. <laughs> we've had a couple people who just absolutely face planted a few times. And then they're like, okay, well, then I just went and did this. And, Ryan and, DeMent. Yeah. Ryan, Ryan, not only face planted once, but twice. I mean, with big numbers. And oh, yeah, right. And, and, and uh, Ryan and I just went back and forth on an email the other day, too. So, uh, Ryan, shout out to you, brother, because you're making it happen, doing it the right way. Sometimes, life just uh, gives you the shit sandwich and you have to eat it and it doesn't feel good and it doesn't taste good and he did it he just came back from the ashes he's like rocky he just get knocked down onto the canvas and just hop right back he is Not yelling me, and right now he's yelling <laughs> adrian <laughs> good for him man you know and then we had barbara on and barbara uh of course you know what i think of barbara i'm smitten with her and i'm i'm, I'm just it's the accent it's not the, the accent. I just love her personality. <laughs> and Barbara's doing a great job building a multi-stream, uh, multi-stream income revenue, uh, and doing it with all positivity. Talk about mindset, you yeah. know, which we talk about a lot. You know, she has the right mindset. Very she process stays oriented. Very process oriented. She stays positive. She stays on the go. She stays on the where it's going to go. She stays results driven. I love that. Well, we had entrepreneurs, so you know, for me. I always had this entrepreneurial streak. I knew I wanted to be in business for myself. And, you know, first of all, I thought, well, I don't have the money to do it. And then once I started getting the money to do it, I'm like, you know, I don't actually really know how to do it. And so I had to get that corporate training in order to be able to do it. But we had a lot of guests who some of them came from entrepreneurial families other people maybe were like you who went in the corporate world and then, you know, decided you wanted to be an entrepreneur. I don't know if I can't remember if you always wanted to when you were a kid. And then there were some people who were just forced into being an entrepreneur. Forced. I yeah. got kicked out. Yep. COVID ki killed me. And those uh, are the ones my that blow my gone. mind. I know. They're like, all right, I'm going to pivot. And so the easy pivot is to find another job because um, I think we, we, we've talked to a number of people. You're never an entrepreneur. And I put this in my book. That's right. From <laughs> yeah. the zoo to the wild. Go it, ahead. Hit oh, over the come head on. With your book. Only, I, I but, swear I'm going to write three books next year. That's you know what? New Year's resolution. I'm actually getting jazzed up about writing another book because of this podcast. Are you really? I am. You've been saying all along you're not going to. I'm not going to. But you know what? You're, you're actually, in your own little way, you're inspiring me again. Just out of great. spite. That's a spite inspiring. No, no. I, well, we're going to co-author this one. Well, I think we could write one with all the nuggets that we've gotten from. All, I know. Yeah, all the I agree. And it's yeah. a quick read. And then what we'll do is we'll audible it. And then what we'll do is we'll audible it with great sounds where I go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> whoop, whoop, whoop. Okay, sorry, I can't do that. <laughs> I don't I, know if that qualifies as a great sound. But... No, is that not a great sound? <laughs> um, maybe we'll I can play the guitar we'll in the back. It. No, I can't even do that. So <laughs> where was I going? Oh, it was so good, though. You're going to write a book. No, but about what we've learned. And mm -hmm. so people said, why are you doing this, Chris? Why, what, I mean, seriously, are you losing focus on your business? I mean, what's going on? I have an accountability group that I, I'm a peer group that I'm in part of every month. And uh, they asked me that. And I was like, you know, no, the answer is no. It's not. This is not the ones making me lose focus. Perhaps the vacations, but you know what? Damn it. <laughs> Dude, you have no idea what I did for the first 10 years. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I sacrificed so many opportunities. I give you a hard but, time, but you've earned them. Yeah. But you know what? Screw it. And you know what? I come back stronger. And it, trust me, when I'm vacationing, people think, oh, so you unplug. No. As a matter of fact, I don't. I think about my business 24 7. Well, how could it be better? That's just how I'm wired. You know, it's the way I roll. And it's not business, it's not work. It feels fun. Uh, so I do it. But back to this is that, you know, can we write the book? Yes. Um, can we keep doing this? A hundred percent. We're going to keep doing this stuff because we're giving back to people. Are you making any money doing this? You know, I've gotten so much more out of this than I thought I would. Um, let's say you played in a band. Let's say you uh, love playing golf. Uh, by the way, both of us do. Mm. Uh, we don't play enough of it, but we come over here and we do this stuff and we have fun. And you and I just having a couple of beers, talking to people. Um, has been a blast, bro. It and has I, been a lot of fun. And uh, you're right. I'm not a good partner. And I am so glad you came along with me on this <laughs> partnership because you know what? It's people, people, people. And that's the last thing I'll leave everybody with. It's people, people, people. If you're not a people person, figure out a way to figure out. To be and we don't person. know how to tell you how to identify good character, but look for it. Just look for it. Yeah.
And with that, keep going up that mountaintop of success. I hope you listen. I hope you keep following. Re- review me. I don't want to beg you, but just just you gotta to keep. Beg, man, we're huge. Fifteen continents. We are three huge. planets. I mean, we are we are in fifteen continents, people. So listen, I think we're doing some good stuff, and I love that you're listening to us. Go make it a great day. And the last thought I wanted to leave you with is: you can be, you will be. Go do it. We're out of here. Cheers.